The time has come to take your oral exam, and the first question is a doozy. What's the difference in a turn coordinator and a turn and slip indicator? If you don't know the answer, that's okay. We're going to talk about that today, and we're also going to talk about how both of them work. Aircraft calling, same position. If you take a round object like this, and you spin it quickly around an axis, the circular object becomes resistant to outside forces. For instance, when you spin a toy top like this, it's resistant to those side forces that would make it fall over. And we call this rigidity in space, and this is one of the principles of a gyroscope. And when we look at both of these instruments, both of these are gyroscopic instruments. And your airplane could have either one of these, so we're going to talk about both of them today. And we'll start by talking about the turn and slip indicator. I want to draw your attention to the words DC electric down here at the bottom. This is important to know because on most training aircraft, the vacuum system doesn't spin the gyros on the turn and slip indicator like it does on the attitude indicator and the heading indicator. So that tells me that if I lose battery power or one of these wires gets cut or ripped, this thing's not going to work the way it should. And now let's take a look at the turn coordinator. Guess what? This one's also DC electric. And when you turn on the master switch in your airplane, typically you'll hear the gyro start spinning in both of these instruments. And if you don't hear that sound, these things aren't going to work correctly. And if either one of these instruments lose electrical power, you'll see a red off flag pop up like this one. And that lets us know that this thing is not working correctly. Which brings me to my next question. Can I go fly under visual flight rules without this guy? And this is a legitimate oral check ride question that I've heard asked to students. And don't let the way they ask you this throw you off. Just remember your A Tomato Flames acronym. This is the VFR Day minimum equipment requirements found in FAR 91205. And now that that's out of the way, let's get back to talking about how the turn and slip indicator works. Now while the turn and slip indicator doesn't tell you any kind of banking information, what it does tell you is if you're in a left or right turn. And if you'll notice here at the bottom, it can also give you information so you can make a two minute turn. Well what exactly does that mean? Let's say, for example, the needle of your turn and slip indicator is pointed over here to this left tick mark. If you can keep the needle on this tick mark the whole time, it's going to take you two minutes to turn 360 degrees. This equates to about three degrees per second, and this is what we call the standard rate turn. You're going to be using this a lot more when you go for your instrument rating. But for now, it's something important that you should at least be aware of. The turn and slip indicator operates on a principle known as gyroscopic precession. This principle basically states that any time I apply a force to a spinning gyroscope like this, there is a resultant force that occurs 90 degrees ahead of the force applied along the plane of rotation. In other words, if I poke the spinning gyro right here, the part that's going to want to move is 90 degrees in front of that location. Not only is a gyro rotor able to spin on its axis, but a single gimbal allows the gyro rotor to tilt one direction or another. Now let's say our airplane makes a right hand turn. When that happens, it brings the gyro rotor with the aircraft. And this causes a force to be placed on the side of the gyro rotor. And because of precession, this force is then transferred to 90 degrees ahead of that spot. When this happens, the gyro rotor tilts in that direction. And because the gyro rotor is tied to the indicator needle, this gives us an indication how our turn is progressing. And when the airplane stops turning, spring tension returns the gyro rotor to its upright position and the needle moves back to the center. And that's how this device works to give us our rate of turn in the airplane. This allows us to tell if we're turning 3 degrees per second, greater than 3 degrees per second, less than 3 degrees per second, or maybe we're in a bank but we're not turning like we thought we were. The turn coordinator works very similar to the turn and slip indicator. The big difference is that on the turn coordinator, the gimbal that holds the gyro in is tilted at a 30 degree angle. This allows the turn coordinator to be sensitive to the banking motions of the airplane, and this in turn gives us initial bank indications. And as the aircraft banks to the right, so does the miniature aircraft on the turn coordinator. And just like the turn and slip indicator, this instrument also lets us know when our aircraft is turning at 3 degrees per second, but it does not tell you your bank angle, and this is a common misconception. So what this instrument gives you is an indication that your aircraft is in a roll or in a bank initially. Then, it gives you an indication at what your turn rate is. So now, when your instructor asks you what the turn coordinator is for, you can tell him it gives you roll rate and your rate of turn. Now, on both of these instruments, I'm sure you already noticed that they have a ball inside of a glass tube at the bottom. This is called an inclinometer. Some pilots call it the slip-skid indicator. 
But before I explain how this thing works, I want to show you some of my favorite gear when it comes to flying. Flyboys and Pivot make some of the best flight bags, iPad holders, and knee boards that there are available. I've been using their stuff for years and I've never been disappointed. In fact, I've been using the same knee board for about 10 years. I still use it and it still works great and is in great shape. Be sure to check out their website in the description below after you watch this video. Now let's get back to talking about the inclinometer. And as I said before, this is nothing more than a little ball inside of a curved glass tube. And the ball is free to move around as forces act on the airplane. When the aircraft is in straight and level flight, gravity pulls the ball to the lowest point in the curved tube. And when you make a turn, as long as the load is perpendicular with the wings, the ball remains centered. But this doesn't always happen. Sometimes, a sideways force acts upon the airplane and this displaces the ball to the left or to the right. When you make a turn, as long as the nose of the airplane is aligned with your direction of travel, the ball will remain centered. This is what we call a coordinated turn. But let's say we're making a turn and the tail of the aircraft is skidding to the outside of the turn. The ball will then be displaced to the outside. This is what we call a skidding turn. To fix this problem, we'll use the rudder pedals to align the nose of the airplane with the direction of the turn. Another thing that could happen is that the tail of your airplane slips to the inside of the turn. When this happens, the ball inside of your inclinometer also slips to the inside of the turn. Something that really helped me understand how this instrument works is that the ball is a picture of where the tail of your airplane is. And to get the tail back in line with the direction of travel, step on the ball to move the tail back into position. But just be aware, if you step on the ball too much, you can actually use too much rudder and get yourself back into a skidding turn. And in this case, you don't necessarily need to step on the ball. Just release some of that right rudder pressure. And this is how we use the rudder pedals and the inclinometer to maintain coordinated flight. So what's the difference in the turn coordinator and the turn and slip indicator? Well, both of them indicate our rate of turn and they both provide slip and skid indications. But the turn coordinator also gives us banking indications and a visual picture of our roll rate. But remember, it does not indicate your bank angle. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Click that like button if you did and please consider subscribing. And I'll see you in this video right here. Or maybe this playlist. See ya!